Okay, today we're going to talk about surface area to volume ratio, um, which is really to do with gas exchange. So our sort of key idea here is that the place where the oxygen is, is the environment. that um, all organisms and cells need oxygen for respiration, particularly aerobic respiration. And of course the bit of an organism that's in contact with the environment is the surface area. So this is where a lot of organisms are going to get their oxygen from. So the surface area of organisms is in contact. The volume is what is the cells that have got to be um, supplied. So if we think about a little uh, unicellular organism. So a unicellular organism, something like amoeba, is unicellular and it's got a real lot of um, so it's got lots of surface area and one cell's worth of volume So that's great, so it's got masses of surface area in relation to its volume and also it's only a teeny tiny distance to the middle so if you're diffusing all the way across your surface and it's only got a very small diffusion distance you can get loads of oxygen and get rid of loads of carbon dioxide so it's also got a short diffusion path. Now it's not rocket science, this uh, relates to the fact this whole topic relates to the factors that affect the rate of diffusion which we did in membrane transport so you should definitely definitely go back and have a look at that now the problem is if you get bigger so multicellular organisms and I'll just um, I'm just going to make up a little random organism made of lots and lots of cells have issues because their surface area is this bit round here and although it's certainly a bigger surface area than my little picture of my amoeba it's got an awful lot of cells to supply and to compound that the diffusion distance is bigger to the very middle. So, well, I'll do them with a different colour actually, multicellular organisms. And I haven't even talked about ratios yet. So, for multicellular, I'm just trying to visualise this. So, I can't spell cellular. We've got not as much surface area. in relation to volume and longer diffusion paths. So th 
This presents a problem because it means that you might not get enough oxygen. So diffusion over the surface is not enough. Sufficient to supply needs. Now, you can notice what I said over here. It's the surface area in relation to the volume of cells that we've got, and that we can express as a, as a, a ratio. So, calculating your surface area to volume ratio. Now, then, I know that. Well, I've been informed that in maths, you can't have decimal points in a ratio. But what we're interested in, as biologists, is how that relates to one to each unit of volume. So your surface area is always going to be to one. How we calculate it, then, is you just divide the surface area by the volume. This gives you your answer, whatever that is, which is your number over here. So if we were looking at, um, so when we did, you'll have done something with maths blocks with your teacher no doubt, and we made cubes didn't we, so we had cubes that had uh, one mass, made of one maths blocks, and then we had um, I won't do them all. Let's say you had a, a cube made of three maths blocks. And then you can calculate your surface area of your cube, your volume, which is the number of blocks that you've used, and divide one by the other. So for one, for one block, you get a six, six units of surface area to every one volume. For the <coughs> three by three block, you've used nine, eighteen, twenty-seven blocks, so that's your volume on the bottom, but you've got a surface area of nine times six, and that gives you a surface area to volume ratio of 2 to 1. So if it was 3 blocks, it would be a surface area to volume ratio. So as we've got bigger, this number's going down. So actually by using decimal points, so if we did it for 5 blocks, and you can work this out yourself, it goes down to 1.2 to 1. So this is the bit that you're not supposed to use in maths. You're supposed to sort of cancel down, I think. Um, but if you just do the division sum, it actually shows you the relationship per unit of volume. How much surface area you've got per one unit of volume. So as you get bigger, that gets smaller, which means that diffusion over the surface is insufficient. Now, in real life, evolution has resulted in a number of organisms that have some adaptations to be multicellular but just do diffusion over the surface. So this is, remember this is a module, a little unit about adaptations for gas exchange. So, you can be thin and flat, so um, my lovely example is the flatworm, it's one of my favourite mini beasts, They're kind of shaped like that, got two little eyes at the front. If you look at them side on, they're called flatworms because they're really flat. 
So, big surface area, very short diffusion path all the way to the centre of the organism. You can be a sort of a worm shape, let's say cylindrical. And again, you know, sort of earthworms are long and cylindrical. If you looked at them end on, they'd be sort of round. And again, you're minimising diffusion distance, maximising surface area. And of course, a super duper thing for increasing surface area of cells is you can be a bit wrinkly, and that will just you know massively increase your surface area. So that's a sort of a cellular level adaptation. Um, so the idea is keep your surface area big and your diffusion distance small. All the rest of the module is now about going to be about big multicellular organisms that have a specialist gas exchange surface because the diffusion's not going to supply their needs. So they're going to need something else going on to supply their needs, to increase their surface area in contact with the environment, to maintain diffusion gradients and to shorten their diffusion path. So everything else we're going to deal with is going to have some kind of specialism, the exception of possibly plants. Okie dokie.